Ooh, that looks like a nasty cold. I think she may need an antihistamine. An anti... Oh, wait. Not an anti... This is the lesson on histograms, not antihistamines. Sorry about that. Let me see if I can fix it. There, there. That's better. Okay. We're going to talk about statistics today, and we're going to talk about histograms. Statistics is just a tool that helps us understand data. It helps us organize data, understand the data, and then communicate that understanding to other people. And today we're going to be talking about one statistical tool, or actually two. We're going to talk about histograms and bar graphs. Let's look at an example. I've got a data set on the board here that shows the age of students at Public School 322. And you can see I've got two columns. I got a column with the age and months, and these rain these are ranges of months. And then I got a column with numbers or frequencies or the counts. And what this means is that for the age range 120 months to 130 months, there were 16 students at public school 322. And there were 60 students at public school 322 that fell into the range 130 to 140 months. Well, that, that chart, that table, tells us a lot, but I think statistics would allow us to understand this better. And if we applied a histogram to this, maybe it would communicate this information more easily to people that wanted to understand what you were doing. So let's build a histogram. To build a histogram, I have to start with two axes. And I've got a vertical axis here, or the y-axis, and along that I've labeled it the number of students. And then I've got an x-axis, or horizontal axis, and I've labeled that age ranges. And I've also labeled the whole chart age of students at Public School 322. And that's kind of important because you want this table or this chart or this histogram to be self-explanatory. You want someone to be able to look at this and say, oh, I know what that chart's telling me. So it's important to label the chart. Well, you need to label your axes too. And this horizontal axis was the age ranges of the students. And it corresponds to the information in that, that left-hand column. So let's put that information onto the chart. I've got 120 to 130 in this region, 130 to 140, and so forth. Now I need to fill in this number line. And right now there's kind of nonsense numbers in there. What I need are numbers that will handle this data. And the lowest number in this data, the lowest frequency is 16. And the largest frequency is 60. So I got to go up to a number at least as big as 60 so I can get all these data points along there. Well, let's do that. And I've gone up to 70. Well, then the next trick is for each of these ranges, I want to build a bar that goes up to the spot on the vertical number line that corresponds to the correct frequency. For 130, I went up to 60 because 130 to 140, there was a frequency of 60. Now there's two additional things I want to tell you about this, this particular statistical tool. First of all, this is a histogram. It's a histogram and not a bar chart because I've got numbers along the horizontal axis. If I had classes of things like Chevrolet, Toyota, Nissan, Cadillac, then it would be a bar chart. Second thing I want you to notice is that this is a continuous range of numbers. It starts at 120 and it ends at 190 and there's no number between 120 and 190 that I can't fit into one of these categories. 
So this is a continuous range, and because it's a continuous range, I run my bars right up to, to each other so they touch each other. If there were a gap between these bars, it might imply to someone that there was a gap in the numbers, and there isn't. It's a continuous range of numbers, so my, my bars are continuous without gaps. Well, let's look at another data table. In this data table, I've assembled information about the hair color of students at Public School 322. And it reads just like the last uh, table. I've got two columns. The left column is listing hair color, and the right column is listing frequency or count. And you read it the same way. There are 23 students at Public School 322 that have red hair. And there's 61 students at Public School 322 that have black hair. Now, we can create a chart to help us understand this data. And I've done that. Along the bottom, I've got the classes or categories that were in the left column. Red hair, brown hair, black hair, gray hair, must have been a teacher, blonde hair. And then, along the vertical axis, I've got a range that's big enough to handle from my smallest number to my largest number. And then I painted the bars so they go up to the frequency that corresponds with that class. Red was about 23. Now, is this a histogram or a bar graph? Well, these are not numbers. These are classes of things. And for it to be a histogram, these have to be numbers. So this is a bar chart. Another thing, red to blonde is not a continuous range. They're groups or categories. And there's, there's no implication that there's a, a continuous flow between red and blonde. This is not a continuous flow. These are distinct, separate categories. And because of that, I put a gap between them. Well, there's some other things we can learn from a histogram, and we're going to show you that now. I've got another table here with data on it, but I put in different data points. Uh, the frequency uh, within 120 to 130 months was 70, and there were 69 between 130 to 140. Well, if I build a histogram of this new data, it looks like this. And you'll notice that there's a lot more high values on the left side than there is on the right side. The right side's kind of low values, the left side's kind of high values. The numbers are really skewed in that direction. Skew just means they're pushed over in that direction, or we have uh, higher values or lower values on one side or the other. And we call this a skewed distribution. Here's another data table. And you'll see that the values are low at the top and, and high at the bottom, or excuse me, low at the top, high in the middle, and low at the bottom. And when I create a histogram for that, it looks like a normal or a bell curve. Low at the outsides, high at the insides. And we call that a normal distribution. Another data table. And in this one, the counts are pretty much uh, high at the top, high at the bottom, but lower in the middle. My histogram shows that. I've got high values at the top, high values at the bottom, and in the middle I've got lower values. So there's two high areas uh, on the histogram, and two or by, we call this a bimodal distribution. Now on this distribution, the counts are all pretty much the same. They're all, it's kind of a flat line that would tie those together. And it looks kind of like a flat line distribution. And we call it a flat distribution. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer.
we're asked to chart this data. Now the first question we want to ask is should we be building a histogram or a bar chart? You remember a histogram's got numbers, usually continuous, along the horizontal or the x-axis. And a bar graph's got classes or ca categories of things along the horizontal axis. Well, these are categories of things. They're categories of cities. So I think what we want is a bar graph, not a histogram. And that's what it would look like. I'd have these categories or the city names along the horizontal axis. I'd build the bar up to the level of the frequency for that, that uh, class, like asteroid has 467 people, so the bar goes up a little bit under 500. And I've left gaps between the bars because asteroid to west moon is not any kind of a continuous flow. Is there an outlier? Well, yeah, an outlier stands out real, real well on a bar graph or a histogram. You can see that star is a whole much, a whole lot higher bar than any of the other bars. So star is an outlier. Well, we've conducted a survey of people to ask them how many friends they had on Facebook. And we broke up the responses into ranges. Zero to 25 friends on Facebook. 25 to 50 friends. 50 to 75, and so forth. And then we listed the frequency or the counts in this right-hand column. So there were 18 people who had between 0 and 25 friends. Now we want to create a chart to describe this. Should we create a histogram or a bar graph? Well, these are numbers. And they go from 0 continuously to 125. So what we want is a histogram. And when we build it, it would look just like that. I hope yours looks like this too. Now, does this bar graph or this histogram describe a particular type of distribution? Well, you see it's low at the 0 and 25 left-hand side, and it's low on the high end at 125, and it goes up to higher values in the middle. So if we were to draw a curve, it would look a little bit like a bell, and we call that a bell curve. And we call this distribution a normal distribution. Well, we, we didn't learn much about antihistamines today, but I hope you learned a little bit about histograms and bar graphs. Now let's test that knowledge. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet on histograms. After you've done the worksheet, then go back to Master Math and try the quiz on histograms. And be sure to come back and see us again real soon.